Hello, I'm Avery Martinez, the Water, Ag and Environment Reporter for First Alert 4 and also a member of the Mississippi River Ag and Water Desk. And today we have a guest with us who's going to speak to us a little bit about the current drought situation, not just here in Missouri, but across the entire Midwest. The U.S. Drought Monitor comes out about once a week and it gives us a snapshot of what the conditions might be like for farmers and ag workers across the entire country. Harshan has actually done quite a bit of research into how the monitor is put together and what the impacts are here in Missouri where quite a bit of the land is currently under some form of a drought restriction. Harshan, thank you so much for joining us. And just to start, I was hoping you could tell me a little bit about what the monitor is, how it's compiled, and really why it's so important. That's a really good question. Um, so before 1999, which is when the U.S. Drought Monitor was really created, there wasn't a good understanding of where drought is in the country and how it's affecting people. This is really the first product of its kind. Before then, you had separate indices like precipitation or soil moisture. But this is the first product that really puts them together to find out where drought is. Um, and so, and drought has so many impacts for everyday folks when it comes to prices of goods, but really at the root of it is that effect it has on farmers and producers and livestock um, farmers who um, their costs are raising when there's drought there. Uh, their feed is depleting, so they have to buy more feed to come in, like hay when their grass is all brown. Uh, their ponds are depleting when, uh, obviously, it's dried up by the drought. And so it's just really important for, like, uh, federal aid or state aid to know where there is drought uh, so that they can address it. I spoke to a farmer out in southeast Missouri, Wilburn Harris, and that was a big cost for him having to haul in, you know, multiple trips a day, spending multiple hours per day hauling in water, hauling in hay from different locations because everything had dried up on his farm by August of this year. And particularly in the last couple of years, this year, the, the, the first half of this year, really the spring and early summer, Missouri farmers were doing all right. Uh, it was really the last couple of years where things were really bad and they had to really resort to a lot of those practices. Um, and then finally around August, September till now in the Midwest, certain in certain areas of Missouri is where you started to see that sort of happen again and where those costs started rising because they had to haul all that in. Interesting, Harshan. Well, Missouri is currently, depending on where you're talking about, either in moderate to severe drought for most of the state. How do farmers feel they're affected? And are they worried about next year? Well, one thing I do want to address there is how how disparate these effects are, even within a state like Missouri. If you look at the western part of our state right now, a lot worse than what you're seeing in areas around St. Louis. Um, but yeah, the the way it's affecting their farms, again, those rising costs. And and one of the, the unique things here, it's not unprecedented, but unique to my understanding in, in Missouri and to this region right now, is how late in the year this drought occurred and is sticking. And the issue there is um, because this drought could clear up as, as conditions get colder, as, as rain starts to drop, there's less of a likelihood that this drought will last for a long, consistent time, a long, consecutive time. And the effect that that has is these federal programs I mentioned earlier that use the drought monitor as sort of a benchmark for when funding kicks in. A lot of them use these arbitrary timetables saying, hey, this region, this county has to be in drought for eight consecutive weeks in severe drought for eight consecutive weeks before any farmers get funding. And so let's say, for example, you have six weeks of drought, um, severe drought, everything's kind of depleted on your farm. And then you get a couple weeks of rain, a couple weeks of, you know, some good, good moisture in your soil, these sorts of things. Um, and so drought clears up a little bit. It even drops down to just a lower level of drought. And then right after that two weeks, the drought comes back and it's severe again. Because it was six weeks on, one week off, six weeks on, you're not getting any funding. Um, and so that's really a big concern here as what uh, a lot of experts who I've spoken to called flash drought, uh, similar to a flash flood where it's this rapid onset of, of drought instead of a flood, um, is that this program doesn't really account for when there's a severe case of this flash drought. And with so much constant back and forth, have any experts or agencies said anything about changing how they respond? That's a good question. Um, so, so one thing here is this would be something that could be addressed in something like the Farm Bill, for example, which we know the extension of just expired. And so um, I, I, sources did tell me that there was some interest among legislators to, to look at some drought data um, 
you know, request some of that drought data to see if they could look at, okay, what's a what's a less arbitrary, more consistent time scale. Um, but really, it's it's just certain experts in these fields, certain people who work uh, with these farmers and with drought and with these policymakers who are sort of sounding these alarms and sort of ringing these bells. It was um, Missouri State climatologist Zach Leeser who actually um, talked to me about this idea and, and sort of told me about this concern that he has about uh, about this pay scale. And, and one of his suggestions was sort of a more case by case system where instead of, hey, you know, only hitting getting drought relief when there's eight weeks you know, nothing more, nothing less for that particular um, time scale and that pay scale, instead of having a more case by case basis where even farmers who haven't had that exact amount of time can still apply, maybe talk to them about the conditions on their farm and uh, can go from there and maybe see if they can get a little help. Now, I want to ask, and I don't even know if this is quite correct, but is the monitor flawed in some ways? Yeah, I think it's important not to overstate that, especially uh, the experts who even have some qualms with it really don't want to overstate that. Truly, the U.S. Drought Monitor is a unprecedented product in, in the way that it incorporates dozens of data indices, dozens of data inputs, hundreds of experts from across the country, and produces this report of what drought looks like in every pocket of the country every single week. Right. So like that's a massive undertaking using tons of data, a completely transparent process. Um, it's just when you get down to these county neighborhood levels, there's going to be some pockets that it isn't 100 percent responsive to. Right. And so it's it sh I think less so is the headline that the drought monitor itself is flawed, but rather the way that policy uses it is flawed. Um, and of course, things can always be better. Right. They understand that their data and their the indexes they look at aren't absolutely perfect. And so that's why they actually do rely on farmers to send them uh, reports sometimes. Farmers can go on the drought monitor website, send them pictures of what their farm looks like, send them, you know, and not just when there's drought, but really during normal conditions, get that baseline established. So when they say like, hey, look, soil's super cracked and you guys aren't reporting it, they can respond to find it credible. Harshan, that's absolutely fascinating. Do you, do you think you could explain to me a little bit of why maybe people should care about this drought monitor, especially if they have nothing to do with the agriculture sector or really ever paid attention to the amount of rain in their community. One thing that fascinated me is, you know, I, I've come across this drought monitor in my earlier years reporting on just, you know, as drought would pop up, like I said, during 2022, 2023, really bad drought that we reported on. And to me, it looked no different than just any other, uh, you know, uh, like piece of data would look, right? It just looks like a, a hard number and that's it. But it's really this very informed process of deciding how to rank drought. Uh, there's, like I said, hundreds of people. There's a main drought monitor author every single week who has to, who consults the previous drought monitor's author, hundreds of experts, and makes that decision for each pocket of the country. And I think that's really important, that it's not, it's not just rain. It's not just soil moisture. It's not just the level of rivers. It's all of that and more that goes into making these determinations. Thanks so much, Harshan. Really appreciate your insight. The Mississippi River Ag and Water Desk covers all sorts of different concerns, whether they're commodities or agriculture pricing or even just the growing of crops from the Canadian border all the way down to New Orleans. For First Alert 4, I'm Avery Martinez.